and when I reach one, you'll be on the other side of the white bubble, our destination today. Three, moving through the white light. Two, moving through the white light. One, be on the other side of it now. What can you see, know, hear or feel? It's almost like I got dropped into like a Leave it to Beaver TV set. Everything is black and white. Great. Feels very traditional. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I guess maybe 1950-ish. Maybe even a little earlier. I feel, I feel anxious because I'm stuck. It's nothing for me to do but be a housewife. And it is a miserable existence. I mean, I'm provided for, but I'm so bored. And have a look at yourself. Can you describe what you look like and what your name is, please? So I'm, I'm fuller figure than I am in this life. Mm -hmm. uh, have blonde hair. I keep hearing Maria. Maria? But it, yeah, but it doesn't seem like it fits what I'm seeing, but... Okay, that's all right. We'll just take the name for now. It could be your middle name. And I want you to look around the room you're in and find the nearest person, please. If you can't see them in that, are you got you found them? Yeah, yeah. And who is it? Is it a child or an adult? At first, I thought I saw a child like slouching on a couch, but then like I wanted to, I wanted him to be playing video games, and I'm like, this doesn't that doesn't fit. And then I was immediately drawn over to the chair okay. and the husband sitting in the chair reading the paper. So I want you to get closer to him. And tell me a little bit about his physical appearance. What are you sensing? Is he bald? He's, Has he got lots of hair? Beard? He's got, excuse me, dark hair. Uh, it's a normal amount, very neatly combed. Mm -hmm. He's tall and mm -hmm. slender. What's his name? Ray? And how old's Ray? 46. 46. And how old are you? 36. 36. And when you see Ray and you feel his energy, how does it make you feel? Do you love him or what's the feeling? So I, it's like I'm feeling two different feelings at the same time. I, I think I had an Uncle Ray. Like in this life, I think I had an Uncle Ray. And it might be the same person. So what I want you to do um, is just check for a minute. Feel the energy of this man Ray. And if you can, position yourself in the room so you can be looking directly at him, and if possible, into his eyes. If you can't see his eyes, then just get a sensation. And tell me, when you look into his eyes, you will know immediately who it is. Yeah, it's, he's a husband here. He was an uncle there. Okay, it is Uncle Ray. Yeah, it's fine. It, Go ahead. No, you're right. So now you can go back to that conflicting emotions because we've got that out of the road. So you don't need mm -hmm. to feel icky about that. We're working right. on a soul level. So your uncle Ray is your husband Ray and you've been together before. So now we want to feel the 
complexity of emotions you feel about Ray in that lifetime only? He's fine. He's not really here or there. He doesn't take up a lot of space. He's pretty easy to care for. There's also no passion. Why did you marry him? Did you sweep you off your feet or it was a practical thing? No, yeah, I just heard what else was there to do. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was he a friend of the family or how did you meet him? It feels like I ran into him a few places around town. Like I maybe saw him on the sidewalk and then saw him in a flower shop and we just kept having these pleasant exchanges. I could feel that he was very interested very quickly. And I could feel that I needed to make a decision. And were there any other suitors around or it was just, he's here, there's no one else, let me be done? He was the best option. Best option? Okay. And why was he the best option? Were the others unreliable? Or... So what I'm seeing is the other option. He's like stout and yeah, gruff and thought he was a lot cuter than he was, but also I could feel that he would have a propensity to maybe get physical. Oh, okay. I just didn't want to be with him. So yep. this was the other option. Do you get a sense of who that person was, that other person? Is it important to know? No. Okay. Let's move back to your family with Ray. Do you have children? No. No children? Is there a reason for that? There's a part of me that dreamt of it, that sort of wanted it to happen, but couldn't follow through with what that meant. That okay. it, I can feel, I can feel the yearning. Like there's a desire that this relationship could be more than it is, that it, I could live a different life than what I can. And Even though I'm stuck, I didn't want to be stuck at that level. And what's holding you back? Time, opportunity, means when like, we just don't have this path in this life. So I want you to ask yourself to move forward in time to another scene in this lifetime where it's important for us to witness something that occurs in this lifetime that's important to you of today. Perhaps something that involves an emotion. And if there's not anything more, then take us to the last day of this life. So they, I've stopped at Ray's bedside. He's getting ready to pass and he doesn't look that old. I'm not that old. It doesn't seem that it's not much farther in the future. Um, I feel sad for him. I'm also so relieved. Oh, and I'm really conflicted about that sense of relief. I, I can feel the most, the strongest emotion is how hard I'm being on myself right now for looking forward to his transition. Not because there wasn't anything wrong with him. He wasn't bad. He didn't, he was a lovely person. It just, he wasn't my person. All right. So allow Ray to pass and then take us to later and let us see how your life played out without Ray. Hmm. There's a sense of freedom that now exists. I, like I see myself at one point driving around in a convertible with those like those old head scarves on okay it's like, um, 
I'm older, but it's almost like I can feel that connection to that youthful energy, that sense of possibility, even though possibility is like long past. And let's hone in on that convertible. Because that's important. So why is the convertible important? It's a way to escape. It's like anything is possible when I'm in that car. I can be anyone. I can go anywhere. Even if I'm just imagining it. What colors are you convertible? It's white. Yeah, but I'm also hearing like it's whatever color I want it to be. The degree to which I imagine this car being my vehicle to anything is like it knows no bounds. It's I can see it morphing. Like sometimes I imagine that it's big, sometimes I imagine it's small. I'm always in it alone though. Which is fine. I'm fine. I'm I prefer it that way. Is there anything else we need to see or shall we take you to the last day of your life? Yeah, no, that's good. Okay, so go to the last day of your life and explain what you do. I'm just sitting in a bed and it's peaceful. It looks like maybe there's friends, maybe nieces or nephews. Like I see people that are younger, they feel like family. Um, um, I don't know, maybe 70-ish. There's a sense of having lived a long life. And I'm just ready to let go. So allow yourself to let go and visualize and see the spirit leaving your body without any discomfort or pain. Now I'd like you to hover over your yourself so that you see the reaction from your loved ones and then let me know whether you need to stick around to witness anything more about your funeral or whether you wish to move to learn the lessons of that lifetime. Yeah, I think I'd rather just learn the lesson that it looks pretty typical of grieving. Allow yourself to hover up and start to follow the white light and call in your angels and spirit guides to begin to transmit to you the lessons of that light of time. I just keep hearing you're free, you're free, you're free. Obviously I'm free in this moment, but there, I can't see it, but I think it's just more the imprint of bringing my attention to all the, like the ways in which I was free. Are the angels ready to take you to the next lifetime now? Yeah. So drift away, float away, allow yourself to drift and float. And we're asking the angels to take you to the next lifetime that's appropriate, perhaps even the lifetime indicated by our Juno reading with a tyrannical relationship, if that's best suited, or any other relationship lifetime. So allow it to drift and float and let me know when you have landed. We've gone back in time farther. Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm in, I guess, a castle. Yeah, it feels like a castle. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? Female. And describe what you're wearing so that we can understand the time frame. There's a, oh, I'm, I have on a robe, I'm holding a staff, I'm sitting on a throne. color of your hair. I, for some reason I can't get past this robe. 
that the rope has details <coughs> that are important then. So allow yourself to feel the weight of the robe, see if you can feel whether it feels comfortable or uncomfortable on you, whether it's got any specific patterns or embroidery or symbolism on it. Are you on a coronation or you're attending a function? That sort of a feeling. This feels like my everyday robe, I need to say. I just keep seeing red and white. It seems pretty plain, actually. I like, again, everyday robe. Uh, it's worn. And I think I'm female, but it's worn how I feel like I see men wearing them sometimes. It's like not across both shoulders. One shoulder's exposed as I like turned a little bit. That's significant. Okay. It's it's a ceremonial way of wearing this robe at this time. The garment that I'm wearing underneath is also plain colored. It's kind of shimmery, shiny. It's fitted at the top and looser at the bottom. Looks like a silvery gray color. And does a name come to you? I heard Anna Maria, but then I discounted it because I was like, we were just Maria. Like, there's no way we're like now Anna Maria. That's um, all right. Just let it be. If it's important, it will come to you. Now, do you get a sense by looking around the room what the architectural style is? Can you describe the room that you're in? A lot of columns. I see a lot of arches, windows. It's also fairly plain, not mm -hmm. ornate. A lot of stone, some mm -hmm. marble. There aren't even curtains on the windows. It's pretty bare bones. Do you feel like you're actually in a church within the castle or you're in the castle itself? I don't know if it's a church, but it feels like a room where some sort of business is attended to, whether it's ceremony or what is it? It's not like the living part of the castle, like the quarter, living quarters. So it's perhaps where you receive the guests or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. That feels better. And do you get a sense of which country you're in? Or what language you speak? I heard Scotland, but I don't okay. know. We just go, there's no, no wrong or right. Just go with it. Are you by yourself? Or is your king sitting beside you? He's not sitting beside me, but he does exist. Mm -hmm. The bare shoulder is like a power move. It's almost an insult to the king. Oh, okay. So he, he's not a strong king, or at least in the dynamic of the relationship, he's not the stronger individual. I've very much run over him, and I'm just annoyed at the weakness. Oh, okay. So he's the one with the lineage and you married into the royal family or is it the mm -hmm. other way around? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And can you take us to a scene where we can explore the dynamics of the relationship between you and the king? 
So it could be when you first met, when you got married, after marriage. Take us to the most important scene that is going to show us why you feel the way about the king. I'm sitting in a room. He's getting a briefing. And I'm there and I can so clearly see how He's, he's not understanding the depth or the dynamic of what's being communicated to him. And it's definitely not my place to speak, but I just, I reach a point where I can't take it anymore and I interject and it causes this. It's just, it's unheard of for me to speak. And that sets the tone. And so can you look at the king now and mm -hmm. get a sense about his being? What does he look like? He's, he looks like he would be a strong king. He's handsome. Um, he looks like he would be a good warrior, but I can see see like a, just like a depth of sadness and I can feel how in over his head he is. Why is he in over his head? Was he, and why is he sad? He wasn't the eldest son. This wasn't even supposed to be his role. Yeah. Something happened to the eldest son in battle. He stepped into assume responsibility and it's never really set quite right with him. And what's the grief about? The loss of his brother, the loss of his father. He's, it feels more like he has a soul of an artist and ruling and governing does not come natural. He feels very deeply emotion and pain. And if he would prefer to just leave it all if he could, but doesn't want to bring that level of disgrace onto the family. And did you two meet before he became king or after he became king? We met before, so it feels like he had this like just bright light, playful energy, big heart. It was very fun. And then it, we were courting and there was this ease about it. And then he's thrust into this position of power and he is like quickly just drowning in the expectations. That's, I step in out of instinct, but then it shifts the relationship and almost brings another level of like depression to him of this knowing that now he can't even, he's not even in charge of his wife. He can't even care for her. Like I'm, he's just drowning. And Do you know what his name is? Edward. And have you had any children together? I want to say no, but it's like I can see a spirit of a boy. Okay. hovering around. So you can communicate with that spirit. Yeah. Yes. So tell me about the spirit. What's the spirit's name? Jonathan, he's waiting. He's waiting to 
be given permission to come forward. That's like, I can't make up my mind. I know an heir is what's necessary, but this just doesn't seem like a healthy environment. And so I'm torn. And do you have any idea what year it is? I'm just seeing like a calendar, like days mm -hmm. being ripped off. I just need a date. Just I'm seeing 1736. I have no idea of that. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. We're we just getting it out of our out brain, of brain right now. Yep, so 36, perfect. All right, so can you look once more at Edward? and feel his energy and see if you can see his eyes. Do you know Edward in this lifetime or have you incarnated with him in other lifetimes if you don't know him? His energy reminds me a lot of a guy that I dated in this lifetime. Oh yeah, I'm just like seeing him shake his head. It's yeah. like the recognition. Okay, great. And have you, is this your second lifetime together or have you had many lifetimes together so he's part of your soul family soul group so do you know just from that revelation of who he is and that he's you've incarnated many times together that you have a specific contract to achieve in this lifetime yeah it's the the contract was to try to make a marriage work and I can feel how in this lifetime it's like this the present lifetime was the last one it's like look at, at this point if it doesn't work I'm we're letting it go okay. can't keep repeating this and it didn't work okay. we left all right so I want you to move this scene forward to show us what the next most important thing is to see in this lifetime regarding how you tried to make this marriage work He's, I'm just, I'm seeing him being beaten and oh. can I again attempt to step in? He's had a really rough go of it. Why is the and king being beaten? It's a weakness. It's his weakness. It feels like there was invasion is too strong of a word because our, our territory isn't that big or important. It's just a see a seizure. Mm -hmm. He's taken the castle's taken, and he's just he's c captured. Uh, who who took it over? Was it a king of England that then took it over if you're in Scotland? Or a king of France or... This is strange. If, so I feel, so the king of England feels aligned, but these are actually... It's like someone within his existing kingdom saw the weakness and was like, we are just sitting and waiting to be destroyed with you at the helm. So it's almost like, like treason. It's his okay. own people in attempt to hold the castle, knowing what is most likely coming. We can't have him at the helm if, if, we, if and when we have to fight. And what happens next? What happens to the two of you? I keep hearing him say, just let me go, just let me go, just let me go. He's just ready, just, he just wants to be done with it. There is no heir, so he's just, can we just please end this lifetime? He's just, he has no fight left. And so does he die? Yeah. Okay. 
So that now leaves you in a very vulnerable position. So what happened to you? A bit of a humiliation, actually. I'm placed more in a position of externally, it, it appears almost like a maid. Okay. So there's this level of public humiliation that's required because I was aligned with the king. But I'm also smart and I know what needs to be done. So it's like this strange position of externally being seen as a nobody but then being kept very close and being used almost in an advisory role so it's like this public appearance of a shameful life but i'm actually treated fairly well when no one's looking and that's because they understood that you were smart and understood the dynamics of kingdoms yeah yeah and do you ever remarry in this lifetime Any other lovers? Nothing worthwhile. Or... There's a part of me that just feels a little broken. So what are the limiting beliefs that you learn about love in this lifetime? It's not strong. It can't be trusted. If it's going to exist, I have to protect it. It's... It feels almost like motherhood. It doesn't feel like an intimate, romantic type of love. It, there's a lot of responsibility with it. Okay. So I'd like you to ask your higher self or one of your spirit guides to help you answer this question now. I want you to ask what patterns are repeating or mirroring across lives into the present life that came from this lifetime? Do actions in one life explain or balance out actions in the present life? Yeah, what I just kept hearing is my belief it's not worth it. It's not worth the effort. I just, it's like it's not worth the effort, but if I'm in it, then there has to be a lot of effort. Okay. So essentially, love is hard work. Yeah, yeah, and that. I will, it's like I have to be the caretaker that's... So you have to take on the masculine energy rather than the feminine energy? Are you ready to release these beliefs now? Yeah, they're exhausting. Like I can just feel... Tired I am with all of it. You're allowed to release emotion if you need to. What I want you to do now is to understand that you are not chained to those beliefs. We can break those old bonds and vows and make new beliefs regarding love right now. So I want you to say after me, I release any outdated vows. I release any outdated vows. Or mental. Emotional residues that were blocking. Or slowing my path to true love. Or slowing my path to true love. If appropriate, you can release a portion of those residues now and work towards releasing the rest due to your actions in the coming days and years. So is it appropriate to release 50%? Okay, mm -hmm. so say 
I release at least 50% at least 50% of any outdated vows of any outdated vows or mental emotional or spiritual bonds emotional or spiritual bonds that were blocking my soul's path that were blocking my soul's path okay are we able to increase it to 70 percent yes okay i release 70 percent i release 70 percent of any outdated vows of any outdated vows or mental emotional or spiritual bonds emotional or spiritual bonds that were blocking my soul's path that were blocking my soul's path Okay, your subconscious mind understands it can resolve and heal past life influences affecting your path by breaking the bonds of time now and by releasing any excessive emotions. So can we push it to 80%? Can we go further to 90%? <laughs> yeah, I can, like, like, I can see huh. like the encouragement and like the throttle being pushed that they're like, there's a part of me that's like, let's just fucking do it. Okay. All right. So we'll push the throttle to 90. Is that throttle going to break? Or are you comfortable with 90%? I can get to 95. You can get to 95? Perfect. Okay. So say out loud after me. I release 95%. I release 95%. Of any outdated vows. Of any outdated vows. Or mental emotional spiritual bonds emotional or spiritual bonds that were blocking my soul's path that were blocking my soul's path so now I want you to release these outdated past influences into the white light of the spirit I want you to physically see them floating away and I want you to understand reframe out loud love is worth the effort Love is worth the effort. Again, love is worth the effort. Love is worth the effort. Love comes easily to me. Love comes easily to me. I allow my divine feminine to be activated in love. I allow my divine feminine to be activated in love. Love is not like motherhood. Love is ecstasy. Love is not like motherhood. Love is ecstasy. Love is strong. Love is strong. Love can be trusted. Love can be trusted. I allow love to flow freely to me. I allow love to flow freely to me. You have done amazing. So I'd like you to move towards the end of your lifetime at, in that lifetime. Allow your body to be released from that life and begin to float away. And you have a choice here. You can either follow the white light, go up into the heavenly realms, or you can go with your angels to another lifetime. What's the, in the highest interest of your soul today regarding breaking vows and limiting beliefs to do with relationships? The light, please follow the light. Now, you may be floating. You may explain to me how you are traveling with this light. And is there a bright light there that seems to call your name? Yeah, I just, I feel really floaty. Floaty, um, just relax and enjoy it. And sometimes you can see different colored lights. They feel like they're beckoning towards you. So just allow yourself to float. And one of those lights may be an angel or a spirit guide or a spirit animal or a person that is here to meet you. Let me know when you feel that presence. Yeah, I feel something taking my hand like reaching out and taking my hand so I'm following I'm seated at a table across from another energy another being
what it feels like I'm being shown is what it feels like to be in the presence of a balanced love. So just soak it up. Let it permeate every part of your soul. The biggest thing I'm noticing is that energy wants nothing from me. Very good. So, so what I really feel is my own energy <laughs> and how I don't normally feel that sitting in front of a love interest. So from now on, you will be able to immediately identify that energy when you come across a potential love interest. So I want you to quickly be shown the energy of an unbalanced love interest. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yep. Okay, now, now go over to the balanced. Yeah, everything just feels really grounded. It's connected in a disconnected way there are clear boundaries and I can feel the clarity of two separate entities. Beautiful. And this energy that you were feeling, is this the energy of somebody in particular that it's important for you to know about? Is this the energy of your twin flame? Is it just an illustrative energy? What I heard is that this is the energy that I've been searching for. It's like we've just not found each other in so many lives because I've not known what to look for. And can you ask them to give you additional signs or clues that will help you really become alert to the energy? What other things will spirit show you from now on so that you actually become awake around this energy? something to do with like i'll i'll just i'll instinctively touch my heart space and if i don't touch it in talking with this person he'll touch his he'll notice oh oh there it is that's the clue okay beautiful so we want to lock that that in So is there anything else to do in that particular area or do we need to move on somewhere else, receive a healing, meet somebody from your soul family or a soul mate? <laughs> no, we can do a healing. I, there's a part of me that I would just sit here in this energy if you just left me <laughs> here. So. But what does your guide or high self wish you to do? Yeah, the healing's good. Like she, she just was like, we'll give it just a little bit longer. Okay, now, like, we're good. And yeah. What's next? Do you need the to healing. go? The healing? Mm -hmm. The healing, yeah. So you're going to the healing room? Ooh, wow. I felt an immediate shift. I'm not in that energy anymore. That was wild. Oh. So you need to let me know when it's done. There's no rushing, but. Yeah, I'm good. And can you please ask for further reference and future reference? The person who's guiding you along today, is that your higher self or a spirit guide? She's a spirit guide. And how does she like to be known? You can just call me Sammy. Sammy? Yeah. And has Sammy been with you for a long time? Or is she a new e guy? She's like eons. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So Sammy, thank you for being with us today. 
And could you please let us know, Sammy, what is your sign? How are we supposed to know from now on when you wish to communicate together? She leaves me. Feathers, lovely. Anything else you need, you need to know about communicating together? It also feels like she sits over on the right side, mm -hmm. kind of like off behind my shoulder. And does she have anyone else that she would like to introduce you today from your spirit guide team, a spirit animal, a soulmate? Does she want to take you to the light council? What's important for you to do while you're up here? She, what I'm hearing is she wants to do the recalibration. I don't know what that okay. means. Okay, all right. Let's go do the recalibration. So you need to be my eyes to let me know what's happening. So the healing room was more like a salt room. Now I'm being locked into a room where it's just, there's really nothing. It's just all white and light. I don't know how to explain what is happening, but it's like debris is being cleaned out of, I guess, my field, my mm -hmm. energetic field. So just take the healing and let me know when it's finished. It's done. Beautiful. And how do you feel now? Almost translucent. <laughs> Good. It's, um, I guess the easiest way to describe it is it feels like this version, this energetic version of myself will be cleaner and clearer when I integrate back with it. Perfect. All right. And would Sammy like to take you anywhere else up here today? She's like, I want to take you everywhere, but no, <laughs> I, I can't take you everywhere. We're, do we're done up here for today? Yeah. And could you please ask Sammy whether our session together is done today or whether she wishes you to see a positive example of a relationship or anything else in your past lives today. Mm, she's just giving me like the sign. Done. It's, yeah. Done. Perfect. I just want to congratulate you and let you know you have done amazing today. You have really received amazing insights into your soul over time. I would like you to turn and thank your higher self and Sammy and yourself of all other lives for showing the way today, for helping you receive healing and insights and transformation into your the way you behave and act in a relationship. So it's time to return back to your present life. You'll remember everything you have experienced very clearly. Anytime you listen to this recording and do a regression, you'll always feel guidance, healing and help from your angels and it will always be a very transformational, healing and pleasant experience. The angels are going to transport you back through the bubble of white light now and into the field where your body has been resting under the tree with that koshi chime. Now, as I count you down from five to zero, you can get ready to awaken. Five, four, three, two, 
one, zero. Awake and refreshed, knowing that you have bro broken the bonds of time and reframed and received healing. Man, that was nice. That was interesting sensations.